All right, so we're done. Yay team. Remember, shipping is a feature. Your software must have it. It's time to celebrate. Oh, but wait. We just made an application for all of our users that talks directly to our database. And now that we've shipped it, we're getting some new information. Turns out that some users have complained that they can't connect to our database due to the firewall. And our DBA is currently having a heart attack because we're letting random users hit our database directly. We need to introduce a service layer. Currently, we only need a single method, which is list friends of user. Let's look at how we can replace the method that we're currently using with one that talks to an API layer. We're going to need to build the API layer along the way. OK, so now we're ready to create an API that will provide some services that our console application can talk to. To do this, we've added a new web project. We've done a file, add, new project, choose an ASP.NET MVC4 web application, and then when it prompts you, choose the web API project template. In here, you're going to find uh, some controllers, including a default home controller, and there's going to also be, when you first create it, a values controller in that same folder. I prefer to move the API controllers into a folder called API. Now, the URL for values controller, which is your, your default Hello World API, is just going to return back value 1 and value 2 if you issue it a get to this URL. So if we run the page, set it as your startup project, here it is. Note the port that you're running on. And then we can use a tool like Fiddler to test this. So we can take our URL here. And we can open up Fiddler and put our URL in here with the substring that we expect to use for our API. When we run this, we can see the request here. And if we double click on it, we can see here it notices that it's JSON and that we have value 1 and value 2 as we expect. You can learn more about Fiddler in, you guessed it, a Pluralsight course. There's also, I'm sure, some great Pluralsight content out there on Web API. Now let's look a little bit more at how we wired this up. Back in our global ASAX, this time we're in an MVC application. So we did still have to do some initial work here to set up our IOC container. In this case, because MVC and Web API have some support for IOC containers built in, we just have to set the dependency resolver to be a structure map dependency resolver and pass in structure maps container. That stuff you'll find in the IOC folder. I grabbed this off of the internet and put it in here. You can get the source files from this course or just look at this screen. You need to have a structure map dependency resolver as well as a structure map scope class. in order for this to work with Web API. Now let's look at the actual implementation of the code that we're going to use. We needed to have a simple service that we could call to get all the friends of a particular user. So now let's look at the friends controller. The friends controller has only one method that we're interested in, and that is get friends of user. I've noted here what the API looks like to call this. So we're going to call API slash friends and then pass in the user ID in the query string. So let me go grab my user ID from SQL Server. So here I'm going to make a quick call, figure out that my user ID looks like this from uh, ASP.NET membership in my Pluralsight book application. And we're going to use that in Fiddler to do a quick test. We're going to call API slash friends question mark user ID equals this. So composer API friends question mark user ID equal. And now if we look at the response, we'll see that we get friend2 at domain.com and yet another at domainee.com, just like we were getting before. So now we have verified that our service using Web API actually works. Let's look at how we can change our console application so that instead of talking directly to the database, it goes through this new Web API. 
So we'll return to just show me my friends. And let's look at the current implementation of friends report. Friends report currently only knows about services, doesn't know anything about data or databases or repositories. Let's look at our structure map bootstrap. You can see it's still configured to talk to any framework and then hibernate. Now let's go back and look at how we can wire up Just Show Me My Friends to talk to this new set of web API services. If we look back at our program, we'll see once again that nothing has changed. We're still just using everything out of Friends Report, so this code was not touched. If we look at Friends Report, again we can see none of this code has changed. Everything here is exactly the way it was when we were talking directly to the database. I've added a new folder called Web API Services. And in this folder, I've added implementations of the two interfaces that Friends Report uses. That is, iFriend Service and iUser Service. In Web API Friends Service, I'm simply creating a new HTTP client in the list friends of implementation, calling out to the address that we expect, specifying the, the headers that we want to use and the string format that we want to use, getting back the response, and then parsing that response into these friend types. If I don't get a response, I return back null. Notice that these friends are of type pluralsite.core.model.friend still, so we're continuing to reuse our core domain logic. We'll talk more about that in a moment, though. Our Web API user service is similar. It has the same kind of code here that we'll refactor out in a moment to eliminate duplication, and then it returns back a user when it gets back a successful result from the Web API. Now, if we look finally at our structure map bootstrap, we can clean this up substantially. As you can see, I've commented out all the database specific ORM stuff, so we could completely eliminate everything related to Entity Framework, everything related to and Hibernate and EF code first, and also everything related to web forms. So at that point, we would have a pretty simple implementation. We wouldn't even need I send email, so we'd have something that would be very, very small for this very, very simple application. Now let's look a little bit at how we could refactor these API calls so that they don't have so much repetition. I've already gone ahead and done this, so let me just update this code while you watch. Now in this case, what I've done is I've created a new object whose responsibility is configuring the API. I've called that API config. API config has that common logic that you saw before in each of the methods. These services simply have the API config passed in through dependency injection, and then they call into it in order to get their request. So they use client here in order to make that call instead of using a local variable. Likewise, Web API user service does the same thing. Now to wire this up so that we call API config whenever we instantiate one of these services and we get this passed in, we just need to set something up in structure map. And so here you can see I'm configuring Web API calls so that whenever I have a request for HTTP client, I'm going to have a singleton, so I'll only use one of these for the entire application. And it will be constructed by calling API config dot get client. So this is an example of using a Lambda to designate how you want to construct the object that's going to be returned from structure map. Now let's see if this actually runs. So the moment of truth. And we can see that we still have a working application. Now we are talking through services to our Web API implementation.